Orthoptists are primarily specialists in the diagnosis and management of vision disorders and eye muscle problems. In more recent years, orthoptists have begun to take on roles that are extended or advanced beyond their primary skills. This has helped ease the burden on the ever-growing ophthalmology service in the NHS. Orthoptists are the right people for this due to their extensive knowledge of eye health and structure, and also their invaluable transferable skills. We spoke to some orthoptists who have developed their skills in these extended roles. My name is Sonia McDiamond. I'm currently the head orthoptist at Warrington and Halton Teaching Hospitals. My name's Martha. Uh, I'm an orthoptist at Manchester Royal Eye Hospital. And my name is Victoria Smerden. I work as a consultant orthoptist at Arrow Park Hospital on the Wirral. Trish and Palmer. I'm one of the advanced orthoptists here at Manchester Eye Hospital. My name is Claire Gillespie, and I work in University Hospital. Galway and Galway Clinic. I currently work in an extended and advanced role um, in stroke rehabilitation and neuro-ophthalmology. I specialise in uveitis screening for juvenile idiopathic arthritis patients. My role uh, as a uveitis screener is basically to check all the children who come in uh, with this diagnosis of juvenile idiopathic arthritis uh, to check that there is no uveitis in their eyes. My specialist area of interest is neuro-ophthalmology and neuro-orthoptics. It's nice as an orthoptist to have that extended role, those assessments of the fundus, being able to sort of use those extended skills. Part of my advanced role, I work in the facial uh, Botox clinic. Within that clinic, we see uh, blepharospasm and hemifacial patients, and my role um, is to um, initially investigate the patient and then inject and treat as needed. I have a professional certificate in medical retina. I do a multitude of scans such as OCTs, I assist with fluorescein angiographies, um, I work closely with a vitreoretinal retinal surgeon and as a result um, after scanning I can now interpret the results of the scan and also formulate management plans um, with the surgeon. Whilst at university, I, my dissertation was on um, the visual complications in stroke and Fiona Rowe at, at the time was one of my lecturers that inspired me to learn more about stroke rehabilitation. Um, I've been lucky enough to work on uh, a couple of um, Professor Rowe's research studies on stroke and um, which again has um, given a lot more evidence to, to the role. Um, I have been the um, stroke um, SIG lead for BIOS as well, which has helped me in my role. They said they needed more uveitis screeners, so one of the orthoptists who was already competent uh, at the uveitis screening trained me up by sat in with a few of her clinics and watched how she did it. Uh, she let me have a go at see some patients and then I got one of the consultants to uh, sign me off on, on my competencies and then I was good to go really. I started many, many moons ago uh, working in stroke and then went into working in a little bit of glaucoma. I did glaucoma for about 12 years, so I got very good at assessing funduses. And then I made the move into working in a neuro-ophthalmology clinic, managing patients with idiopathic intracranial hypertension, pituitary tumours, referrals in for unusual pupils, managing um, more complex neurological conditions. I was doing a multitude of scans such as OCTs and angiographies of which at the beginning I wasn't sure what the results were and how to interpret. I decided that alongside this I wanted to do some more qualifications so I did a master's through the University of Chester. And I found a medical retina professional certificate course ran by University of Ulster in Coleraine, Northern Ireland. Um, it was a role that um, I'd seen as working in the Botox clinic where we did your business patients that I'd worked with the consultant um, who led me to a fellow consultant who runs the clinic and after speaking to him we decided that yes there was a role for an orthoptist to move into that and how I could help um, assist him to begin with and then see how we could move that forward which is where we're up to at the moment. We naturally like puzzles and basically neuro-ophthalmology patients are the most complex orthoptic puzzles you can come across. So I think it was it was the passion that I had and the inspiration I took from others really that has um, allowed me then to go into that role really. Since coming to Warrington, 
again, I've, I've ventured into more of neuro ophthalmology as well. So we've been looking at and um, working very closely with neurologists and neurosurgeons and endocrinologists and monitoring patients who have visual complications um, and monitoring for any progression. And as orthoptists, because we're really good at explaining things and talking to people of such different age groups and different um, sort of, you know, demographics and dynamics, it makes us really good in that clinic because you can break it down, your, your explanations and what you do. I have detailed knowledge of the anatomy of the retina um, and the eye itself. I think as an orthoptist that works really well because um, of our anatomy training from the start where we get at university level. And I think that gives us a good basis of um, the muscles around the eye, how the eye works, because although in the facial clinic we're not injecting into the uh, muscles, extraocular muscles, you've still got to be aware of the areas around the eye. Being able to communicate effectively, so when a patient, um, which a lot of the time is in the elderly bracket, I'm able to express in layman's terms what is going on with um, their eye problem. A big part of it is um, how we communicate with the patients. They already have that experience with children and you need to be able to build a really good rapport. It's, it's a scary thing having someone inject needles very close to your eyes. So just being able to put them through that process, what our role is, how we can assist them, and then usually calm them before we go ahead and inject. You need to be able to explain to the child that it's obviously not going to hurt them, it's perfectly safe, and you need to get them to trust you so you can get a really good look at their eye. everything is that allowed <laughs> the best thing is you feel like you're making a huge difference to these patients they are a very rewarding group of patients to work with i love the fact that you're not just dealing with the patient you're dealing with the family the carers and you're involving them in the patient's care the clinic is also it's a change from your normal day to day and I think that's that's good for an orthoptist. It's a different conversation, it's a different case history, you're doing different tests, you're looking for different things. So it sort of it breaks your week up a little bit. It's just a completely different feel to an orthoptic clinic. No day is the same and no condition is the same. So you cannot fit one textbook case with another. I think we go above and beyond our role each day, but we take it for granted actually the different things that we do for the patients. They're just some of the extended roles available to orthoptists. While orthoptics at its core treats childhood vision problems and eye muscle problems, it is an ever-growing profession which is vital to support the demands on ophthalmology services around the world.